I've been seeing a lot of people online asking about how to close up the gaps on their top surface. They're talking about where the top skins meet the inner wall. There's like a nasty little gap there. I'm going to tell you about a few settings that you can use in Cura to get rid of those gaps, get better looking top surfaces, and make better looking prints. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. I already have a 20 millimeter calibration cube loaded and sliced into Cura. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of my top and bottom line. I'm going to set those to 90 and we'll re-slice. And this is where the gap is most noticeable. That orange that you're seeing down there, that's the infill. Now, in fairness, I don't print with my lines like that. I'll use an orientation of 090. Actually, don't forget that comma in there. So we'll go 0, 90, and I'll re-slice. And what you're doing is alternating your layers. The perpendicular to each other is what's happening. Each one's 90 degrees to the previous. But that's only for the top and bottom skins. But you can see where we really didn't solve the problem. We hit it a little bit. Uh, I can still see the previous layer underneath. Yeah, it's only one layer deep, 0.2 millimeters in my case right now, but I still want it gone. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up to the quality section. Cura will allow you to have different wall widths for the inner and outer walls. So I'm going to change my inner wall to be 0.32 and I'm going to re-slice. The reason for that is it does help solve the problem a little bit. You notice we got a little bit of a difference going on up here. And that's because by reducing this, uh, the inner wall, it just spreads them out differently. The math works out a little different. But the benefit to it, if you have Cura's uh, manual, the settings guide, it has a nice exp explanation on why it's beneficial. So all you got to do is hover over it. And it tells you it adds strength. I haven't personally tested it for strength, but I have no reason to doubt it. So it's worth getting. If you don't have the settings guide, go to the marketplace. It's a free plug-in. Grab it. It helps out. Okay, back on track. The inner wall length is at 0.32. That's not solving our problem. It hides it a little bit, but that's still not good enough. So let's come down to the top and uh, top surface skin layers. I'm going to change that to 0.16 for the width and re-slice. And you can see how it made my top skins different, uh, smaller. They're at 0.16 instead of 0.4. And it just looks a lot tighter and a lot nicer, but I can still see some separation here. Now, to be honest with you, it's a 20 millimeter cube. I'm really zoomed in there. I probably couldn't see that with the naked eye. But then again, I'm an old guy who doesn't see much without my readers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that to 0.12 and see what happens. I'll re-slice. And that looks good. I like that. Now, the one thing you may have noticed is we went from, I think it was 26 minutes we started with for print time, we're up to 30. And this is only a 20 millimeter cube, so that's four minutes we added to it. But we can fix that. I have my top layer set to four. What I'm going to do is come up here to the top surface skin layers, and I'm going to change that to two. And I'm going to slice, and it looks the same. But when we break down layer by layer, you'll see that the change in the width only happens to the top two layers and the bottom two are still at 0.4. And that same thing holds true when you get down here into the Z area. Right there, come down one, two, and we're back to the 0.4 millimeter width. And even down here at the bottom of the Y. 
and it takes care of that. And you'll see we're back to 28 minutes. Now, I like to do two layers because I alternate my layers. Like I said, 90 degrees to each other. If you wanted, you could actually come in and just change that to one and slice. And it looks the same. And there it is, just one layer, but and we're back down to 26 minutes. Now, one final step you could take, I'm gonna put this back to two, just for me. Um, you could come down here and on the skin overlap percentage, what that's going to do is tell it how much of the top layer uh, lines, the skins, will overlap into the inner wall. So I'm going to change that from 10% to 50% and re-slice. And you can see how this yellow line is coming right in to our wall, our inner wall. It does it everywhere. And it's a good thing. So it's just an extra added feature that you can use to your advantage to get better top layers. I haven't tried it with these settings yet and monotonic ordering, but you can bet I'm going to. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did and you apply it to your own models, tell me about it down below in the comments. Now, while you're down there, if you don't mind, hit that like button, smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future, live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.